Women burn out more and sooner than men. They are more likely to suffer from chronic fatigue and anxiety. In this video, I want to explain the physiological reasons and biochemistry of why this happens to give you a few starting points if you're affected. If you read about burnout online or spend some time on related forums, you will most likely notice one of two things. One, women in general are overrepresented when it comes to burnout. And two, they also make up the majority of severe cases. But why is this? What's going on here? Most resources on this topic focus on different stressors that women are under compared to men, for example, in the workplace. That's a sociological debate I'm not going to go into in this video. Instead, I want to look at burnout from a biochemical perspective. And by burnout, I don't just mean work-related stress, but exhaustion from any type of activity. You could also call it chronic fatigue, adrenal burnout, or a complete shutdown of your stress response. We will look at hormones, pregnancy, and of course, nutrition to understand why there's the so-called exhaustion gap between men and women. And just as a side note, I got the idea for this video from the website adrenaladvice.com, which you should definitely check out. To get started, let's first talk about the normal hormone difference between men and women. On average, men tend to have more testosterone, while women have more estrogen in their body compared to the other sex. Now, just for your information, total androgen levels in women are still higher than their estrogen levels, but their ratio between testosterone and estrogen is just smaller. This relative estrogen dominance in women plays a huge role in their overall fear and anxiety levels. Estrogen seems to influence a part of your brain called the amygdala, which controls emotions, especially primal emotions like fear. Another biochemical aspect that estrogen influences is copper, because it raises copper levels. We will talk about the role copper plays in your stress response later in the video. Before that, let's talk about the menstrual cycle, which should be an obvious factor. If half of the population goes through an emotional roller coaster every month, then it is pretty straightforward that they're also more likely to burn out over time and just suffer from chronic stress more. Throughout the menstrual cycle, certain hormones go up and down, especially estrogen and progesterone. And we know that fluctuating levels of these hormones will have an impact on your HPA axis. Your HPA axis is the connection between your hypothalamus, pituitary gland, and adrenal glands. When under stress, your brain releases a hormone called ACTH, adrenocorticotropic hormone, and this in turn triggers the adrenal glands to produce cortisol, which is the major stress hormone next to adrenaline. And over time, this can lead to your stress resistance going down or your stress response overfiring, which of course contributes to burnout. All of this is more likely to happen to women because like I said before, the hormone fluctuations trigger the HPA axis and also they have less testosterone, which works as an inhibitor of the HPA axis. The third factor we need to talk about is pregnancy. Now, I wouldn't know myself, but pregnancy obviously is a super stressful event in your life, both mentally and physically. During pregnancy, cortisol levels increase between two to fourfold in the mother, and their adrenal glands also increase in size. So, of course, you have much more stress on the female body compared to their life before the pregnancy. And this is one of the reasons why around one in eight women get postpartum depression. Not only is postpartum depression becoming more common, but pregnancy is just another stressor women might need to deal with that can add to burnout. The last factor I want to talk about is nutrition, and this is probably the most interesting because it's the easiest to change. The first nutrient I want to go into is copper, and copper is really fascinating because it's closely related to your stress response. Like iron, copper is a stimulating nutrient that increases your metabolic rate. Both are important for energy production and the synthesis of red blood cells. But you run into problems if you have too much of a good thing. In the brain, copper pushes the conversion of dopamine to noradrenaline, which then gets further converted to adrenaline. That means if you have a copper excess, you can quickly become adrenaline dominant. 
This is a complicated subject because you always need to distinguish between bioavailable and biounavailable copper, which I explain in much more detail in a different video. The reason this is important for women is because they're more likely to become copper dominant, and there are two causes for this. One are their higher estrogen levels because estrogen retains copper. This is a natural response by the body because additional copper is needed when a woman gets pregnant for the formation of blood vessels in the fetus. If their body can eliminate the excess copper after the pregnancy, you don't have an issue. But if it can't, or if the level is artificially increased, for example, through birth control or a copper IUD, then you really run into problems. The excess copper will sit in the tissue, create inflammation, and keep spiking your adrenaline. The second cause for the higher likelihood of copper issues in women is that they're more often vegetarians or vegans, so they follow a low zinc, high copper, high phytate diet. Zinc is copper's natural antagonist. It has antioxidative properties and is a calming nutrient. You need it to keep copper under control and there should be sufficient zinc reserves in your tissue. For example, on a hair analysis, we like to see a zinc copper ratio of eight to one. Many women and also some men have a way lower ratio than that. And this is made worse if they don't eat meat or they eat a lot of grains because red meat is one of the best sources of zinc and whole grains are very high in copper. The phytates in the grains also bind zinc more than they bind copper, which can increase the imbalance even more. Now, please don't get me wrong. I'm not telling you that a plant-based diet is bad. What I'm trying to say is that it always depends on your individual nutrient profile and what your body tolerates. A lot of vegetarians and vegans lead very healthy lives. But I've also seen a lot where their diet was making their problems worse. Usually they feel great for the first couple of years because of the stimulating effect of copper, but once the overload gets too much, they crash and burn out. At that point, you also run into another problem, which is the overall depletion of your calming nutrients. You basically pee them out because your body wants you to be ready and not calm when under pressure. That means when you're under a lot of stress, you definitely want to make sure to replenish these minerals afterward. Depending on what type of diet you follow, you always want to be aware of their benefits and their drawbacks and maybe compensate for potential deficiencies of that diet. For example, if you don't tolerate dairy, which is totally fine, then I would still advise you to find some sort of bioavailable calcium that you can add to your diet. Like copper, calcium is a complicated topic because you also have the risk of tissue calcification. I talk about that in a different video. When it comes to magnesium, to be honest, almost everyone is lacking it because we as a society are a magnesium deficient society. So definitely also look into that. Great. To wrap up this video, I hope these points helped you understand a few of the reasons why women tend to burn out more than men. Of course, I'm generalizing here, and there are also men that suffer from this problem. I was the best example of it. One last thing that definitely also influences this is that on average, women talk more about their health problems than men. I think this is a good thing, but it can definitely influence the statistics. But only when you talk about your problems and accept them can you fix them and get healthy again. 